Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks is a man-made oddity. I'll tell you what, it has over 1,100 miles of shoreline, more than the entire coast of California. And this shore can be built on. In fact, of those that own two homes in the Midwest, almost half own property here. Many of you have heard of this place because of the show. Lake of the Ozarks? Yeah, 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 Lake of the Ozarks. Southern Missouri. Every summer, five million cash-rich tourists show up. My point is, you can buy land right down to the waterway. And contrary to the appearance, this series wasn't truly filmed in Missouri. They did, however, get a few things right. Of course, the primary method of transportation here is by water, so the community swells in the summer when they hold some of the largest boating events in the world, including the Lake of the Ozarks shootout. Kind of a national attraction at this time of year that everybody from around the nation just converges on this lake with more performance boats than you'll ever see anywhere else in the world. There will probably be around 120,000 people. Where spectators create a three mile long chain of boats to view some of the fastest watercraft in the world. The overall record on the one mile course was set there at Catherine's course at 244 miles an hour. Interestingly, the history of how this all got started is just as fascinating as the event itself. While today the Lake of the Ozarks looks like, well, a lake, it was entirely different in the early 1900s. In fact, it was farmland. There were no roads, and where much of the country had electricity, the Ozarks had none. A Kansas City lawyer who stumbled upon the area began forging partnerships with local engineers and banks to create a hydroelectric dam which would bring electricity to the area, but also flood most of it. The locals who couldn't fathom their farms being flooded took deals that inevitably forced them off the land and construction began in 1929. The ambitious project brought jobs and wealth to the area, just as the country hit its worst economic period in history. In 1931, the Long Bagnell Dam was completed and people arrived from all over to watch the reservoir fill. A month later, it was the largest man-made lake in the world. Unlike other reservoirs, the Lake of the Ozark shoreline is private land and today over 70,000 homes live on its banks. The area quickly became a tourist destination and water sports mecca. In fact, over 5 million people visit every year. And in August, the most attended event of the year is the Lake of the Ozarks shootout, which we were lucky enough to attend. But all of the events, including the three mile long boat chain, were taking place on the water, and we didn't have a boat. Yeah. So I got hooked up with Boat Planet, who's gonna take us out to the race course with all the boats that are tied up together. It sounds like a massive party, a lot of stuff going on. The boat's gonna be whizzing right by us. We're gonna hop on their boat and see what it's like. Everyone to come down to the shootout. It's a good time. Yeah. If you haven't been here, you need to get here now. Among this frenzy of booze, babes, and watercraft, there are a series of races that people prepare for all year. So we're with John Heiss, and it is his first time racing in the event. First time in the event. So what kind of output are you getting with this? What, what specs are you running? 1,300 horsepower, 1,125 foot-pounds of torque at 117 mile an hour I'm cruising at 51% torque. This motor don't even know this boat's here. So I'm with Taylor here who's racing this monstrosity. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the boat. Yeah, so this is a 340X Cat. So it's made by Marine Technology Inc. or MTI as most people know it as and it has twin 400 outboards made by Mercury. And it's, like I said, 34 feet long. And we've gotten to 123. Today we're hoping over 110. And so what do you do to prepare for a race like this? Like, it, um, it, especially being your first yeah, time, are you so nervous? We What's... do a lot of testing. So we do a lot of different boating events throughout the year. And so this is um, my boat that I always drive. So I am used to it, but I haven't actually used it in a race setting before. So we have been out with 
some bigger boats, like usually up to like 52, 55 feet. So I'm used to kind of running with the big dogs. And of course, the boats haul ass. Among other classes, the pontoon winner reached 106 miles per hour, and the top gun reached 204. We spoke with the team from American Ethanol, who reached that peak speed. How do you work with two people to get the boat going where it needs to go? It actually makes it a lot easier because one person can concentrate on where we're going, and then the other person, the throttle, can concentrate on the engines. And you know, the whole key here is getting a really good launch and getting the direction of the boat perfect right off the launch. So. There's very little rudder input after that as you're going down the course because every time you correct a little bit, you're going to take speed off the boat. So you, you come into the beginning of the run in 15 seconds, you probably burn a thousand calories and you're drenched with sweat at the end of it. It's, it's pretty much just you know dead on focus on what you're doing for those 15 or 20 seconds. So tell me about the boat itself. What are you rocking? Uh, it's a 51 Mystic. Um, it's about four years old now. We've run it here for about four years and um, it's got about eight or 9,000 horsepower. It's got four blown ethanol engines in it. We've run quite a few other, you know, 50 Mystics here at the shootout with turbines in it. They actually have helicopter engines in them. But this is the fastest piston-powered one that's ever run here. An artificial lake, intense speeds, and a collection of happy boaters are what makes up the Lake of the Ozarks shootout. <laughs>